Hi Matt, welcome to Cooper Parry. It's great that you're coming to talk to us today. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing about what you've got to say about brand and culture, uh, not just today, but also on the 4th of July when we've got our culture carnival. Um, but I know that you're really passionate about people and business, and I'm passionate about people and business too, but I do events. Uh, but you do brand, and I'm still a little bit unsure about how they connect. So how did you get to this point? Well, first of all, Steve, thank you so much for having me in. And also thank you for having me um, as part of the Culture Carnival. It's, uh, it's a real privilege to be part of a brand which is actually living into their brand. So many businesses say, oh, we are X, Y, and Z. But the thing I love about Cooper Parry is you guys actually go for it and, uh, and you know, are growing because of it. So go back to your question, though. Yeah. Why, uh, how does brand connect to culture? So I think the best place to start very briefly is with a, a definition of brand. Because when I say brand, people sometimes think the logo and some fonts. And the truth is that there's a far wider and greater definition, which is the meaning people attach to you and your offering. Okay, so that's your brand. And you don't actually own that, right? That's, they own that, your audience owns it. It's in their hearts and in their minds. Branding is the game that I'm in, which is the attempt to manage that meaning, to help businesses figure out what it is they want people to connect with them and then help them to really communicate that from the inside out. So that is, has everything to do with culture because once you understand why you exist and the purpose of your organisation, then you have to see how that, that kind of li is lived in your company culture and then your customer experience and then ultimately into your marketing. So my background was in graphic design and I ran a creative agency for a number of years and I've had leadership positions in creative uh, and marketing uh, kind of companies. And the one thing that really, really always upset me was we were always um, kind of creating veneers for things like the, the graphic design, the logo, the fonts, the photography, all of that stuff. And that's all good stuff. But what upset me loads was when I knew that the customer experience and the employee experience behind the veneer that we were creating didn't actually live up to the truth. So I guess the reason why I'm super passionate about brand and, and you know the event that we're going to be doing and culture is because brand and culture are everything, right? You understand where you're, where you're at leadership-wise, um, why you exist, your purpose, and then from that, everything has more meaning um, and is more meaningful. And so the truth um, of that is so crucial because that, that, that kind of creates something that's quite, quite, um, quite meaningful in your life. So I, I'm, I'm bought in already. I think that um, branding is incredibly important with culture and vice versa. Um, so, but when companies have, have got it wrong, what happens? Well, I think there's kind of, there's, there's three or four key areas that are worth kind of considering when it comes to, to, to branding and ultimately your culture. The first is your leadership, right? If, if you've got a bunch of leaders and they're all pulling in different directions, it's chaos because no one really knows what's going on. The leaders themselves get frustrated, and that can sometimes happen when a, a business maybe is uh, 10, 15 years down, down the road. When it first starts, there's usually a very clear purpose, vision of the owner, but then that can become lost. And so leadership becomes a challenge when that's not been set and defined and clearly articulated. Um, so that's the first thing, leadership. The second thing is, is then employee experience, right? Because if the company is hiring people, um, rewarding them, recognizing their great work on the basis of the meaning that they want, uh, that ultimately their customers to attach to them and the purpose of the business, then that means that if I, if I join your company, right, then I, and, and I believe in what you believe, then I'm gonna have much more, a much better experience. And it also means that if some, something falls out of a series of, of the rules that I've got to live by, right, uh, as an employee, something comes up, a situation, um, I also feel empowered to kind of behave in a certain way that I know the brand and the business would approve of. So employee experience is, is, is super, super important um, and comes out of it. And on the flip side of that, if, for example, it is just the veneer, the brand is just looked at as, as a logo and some fonts, um, and there's nothing true behind it, what happens is employees get incredibly sceptical uh, down, downhearted really because they, they realize actually is this business just all about making the people at the top loads of money because that's not really something that I personally am passionate in and so it kind of becomes quite an empty existence people start hating their jobs hating to turn up to work which is not not what anyone wants and that leads into the kind of 
the final kind of area, well, there's, there's two kind of other areas, I suppose. The next area is in innovation and creativity. So if you've got a culture that's just based on the numbers and the data, what happens is, is everybody's looking at those things, and of course, they're highly important and very, very valuable, but often they're rear view mirror looking. There's stuff that's happened in the past. And the future of business though is, is, is innovation and new ideas and new concepts and new ways of creating meaningful experiences for the customer. And if you've got a situation where people are scared to come up with that, or they just think, if I, if I, if I give this idea in, no one's gonna care because I can't prove it's gonna make a return on investment, so I'm gonna get shouted down, I'm gonna look silly, then people don't do that. So then that stifles growth in, in a business. So innovation suffers. And the final, of course, the final area, if branding's not done correctly, um, is the customer experience. And so when a customer comes across the person on the front desk, the person that answers the phone, if they're demotivated, if they can't really give a great pitch as to why this brand exists, then why should the customer believe in it? And that's gonna have all sorts of knock-on ramifications for the customer and how they believe and interact with that brand. So four, those four key areas, I think, are affected if brand and by extension culture is not considered and purposefully designed in a thoughtful way all the way through. Well, and that's great. So uh, through your extensive experience now with the, the branding and the companies you've been working for, do you have any examples of, um, uh, of when it's gone right or when it's gone wrong? So I can't be too specific, I won't be too specific, but I'll give you some examples of where, it's, where, 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 where things go right. So one business that, I, uh, that I've been working with, they uh, very much see themselves as kind of heroes, right? And they are there to save the customer from this terrible evil that's in the customer's life cycle. And, uh, in, uh, and they, they exist to do that. So that's great on the front lines, right? But internally, how do you kind of champion hero he heroism? Like, how do you do that? And this particular business, what, um, what this team decided to do was to have, for example, a, um, an award that went once a, once a week to the hero of the company, right? So uh, who exhibited heroic um, efforts. Now that could have been anything. It could have been someone in the finance team, for example. It could be someone in, in the marketing team. Um, but it was awarded by, by somebody on the, on the leadership team. And they were like, look, Larry has, uh, has this week, he saved, uh, he saved a company from, uh, or saved the customer from, uh, from a real disappointment. He stayed late on Tuesday night and Wednesday night and Thursday night. So this, this week, we're going to give Har uh, Larry the, uh, the award for heroism. And that kind of is just a small example of how you can, once you understand why you exist, we're here to save the customer, we're a hero in their story. That's one example of how you can kind of inject that into your team and remind them all about it from a culture perspective. Where I think it goes wrong is probably in some of the things we've, we've sort of mentioned is where um, people become fearful, right? They don't really know what, why they're there and they get a bit scared about coming up with new things. And the worst kind of example is when um, I think everything becomes about the sales figures, the numbers. And I know I'm at Cooper Perry and you know, numbers are, are, are very important to accountants, but obviously they are. But the thing that drives the numbers is the, is the emotion, is the innovation behind it. So cr the, the number one kind of um, enemy of creativity is fear, right? Because if people are scared of coming up in the, with, with of putting their hat in the ring and sharing some ideas, you're never gonna have any new ideas. So you've gotta, uh, and people become scared when everything's about numbers because they can't, it's a future thing. Like, I don't know if we try this new thing, whether or not it's gonna make loads of money or not. But I still want to know from, 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 from my team, like new ideas to come forward. So I think that's probably a, another, that's an example of where things go terribly wrong and where people start getting really kind of cocooned when they don't feel safe. So you've got to allow them to breathe. And you can do that through the culture and you can do that through the brand, uh, the brand strategy that you set. Just around the corner, 4th of July. Um, there are some tickets still available, not very many. So HR guys and business guys get booked on. Um, well, what can we what can we expect? What's going to be the, the really you know like an overview, some takeaway tips that we can get from you? Sure. So um, I'm going to be talking about what I call brand thinking and how I believe that should be through all the activities of a business. Okay. So we're going to talk about how. Okay, it's lovely to set these big high sort of visions and strategies, but how do you actually get that out into teams? Like it. How does it just not stay in the boardroom? How can you get that to be relevant to say a grad who's just joined your, your company? 
to the point where they get excited about it as well. Um, and so a little sort of sneak peek is we're going to be talking about um, uh, one of the most powerful tools that I've uh, that I, that I use in some of my work and it's to do with storytelling and it's all about seeing yourself or your business your brand as a almost like a character in the customer's story okay so they're the hero of the story and they're trying to get somewhere they're trying to affect change in their life so what kind of character do we need to be are we wise like a sage or are we kind of her heroic are we a rebel we're going to help lead a revolution and what I found is, we're going to talk a little bit around that, what I found is that it's a, such a powerful tool for people to live into and to recruit against and to excite people with. And it's a little bit more different, it's slightly creative, but highly, highly um, valuable for a business to understand in, if they want to kind of make the strategy stick in reality to, to, to the activities of the business. Hello, my name is Matt Davies. I'm a creative brand strategist and consultant. I'm super excited to be involved in, uh, in Cooper Parry's um, Culture Carnival because culture is everything. Brand and culture are so closely linked and I think that without them, um, business becomes meaningless. Um, and so no one wants to work for a meaningless company, no one wants to have a meaningless job. And so it's super exciting to hopefully add some value and to share some thoughts and ideas that will inspire the businesses that come to really be the best they can be.